Yeah, now we've done a um, study about the, um, the, the importance of the Word of God. I believe you still remember that um, uh, the last two weeks, at least, at least the last two weeks, uh, we've learned about the Word of God, the importance, of, not only the Word of God, but the importance of keep saying the Word of God. I remember that. So, okay, uh, can I see your hands? How many of you were here the last two weeks? Or at least last week? Yeah, most of you. Now, so if you missed that, uh, that series, please uh, go back um, to our YouTube channel and then please um, just uh, feel free to watch. Yeah, because we've learned something very, very important. Um, it might not, uh, you know, it might not sound really that deep, but that's very, very important because the, we, we know that the Word of God is God. The Word of God is God. Yeah, last week. The Word is God Himself. As, as it is written in John uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Yeah, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and uh, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So that's very important. Now, still it's a continuation from uh, the series from, that we have learned last week. So now this is about parable of parables. Now, probably some of you uh, start to think, okay, what is this all about? The parable of parables. Now, first, what is a parable? Now, as you might know that uh, many times when... Uh, during his earthly ministry, when Jesus was walking, when he was about to share something very important to mostly to, to many people, yeah, back then in Israel, yeah, to him. So, what is a parable? Now, some people may say that a parable is to uh, when you want about uh, when you want to uh, share something. So, you can use a parable just to make something. Yeah, to understand, yeah, parable. So it's like uh, using something figurative, figuratively, just to make things easier to understand. Yeah, that is a parable. But on the other side, a parable is also designed to hide the true meaning inside the story. So that means what? That means when Jesus shared something in a parable, it can be even more difficult to understand. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, there was a time like one day Jesus shared in front of the multitudes of people, like hundreds, probably thousands of people, seven parables. Now, all of them, every single one of them was about the kingdom of God. When Jesus said, okay, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like something. It's like something. Every single one of them is about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like... Uh, uh, a sower going out to sow a seed. Remember that? The kingdom of God is like a dragnet, you know. The kingdom of God is like a yeast, you know, put in, a, in the dough and then stir it up, things like that. Seven parables in one day. Every single one of them is about the kingdom of God. I learned one of them. Now, this one is really, really important. I will show you later on, yeah, real quick, why this one is very important. Okay, now, the one parable that we're going to learn today, we're going to learn uh, from Matthew 13 and Mark chapter 4. Now, at least those two part of the scriptures we're going to learn. Now, let's uh, dig in even further from Mark's account. All right. Now, not that long, so I'm going to read this for you. Now, of course, you may follow me with your own version, your own Bible, probably in Bahasa Indonesia or any other version. All right. Let's read Mark chapter 4. Three, two, eight. All right. Okay, we're going to look up here. All right, this is Jesus himself. All right, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. Now, this is a parable of a uh, sower going out to sow uh, some seeds. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. So I'm going to be a bit slower, yeah. So, so please follow, follow this um, Sorry, carefully. Yeah, verse 5. Some, yeah, some of the seeds, fell on the stony ground where it did not have much earth. All right? And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Six. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root with that, no root, it withered away. Seven. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. No crop. What's that? Verse 8. But 
other seed fell on good ground. This is very important. Good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty and some a hundred. Praise the Lord. Now, all right. Now I believe that every one of us have heard this story. Yeah, probably since Sunday school. Maybe I don't know, because this is one. Uh, this one is quite famous actually. Now, from this parable that Jesus shared, at least we know there are four different grounds. Four different grounds. So, what are they? These are the grounds. The type of the grounds. Yeah. First, wayside. Now, remember, a sower went out to sow seeds. And the seed fell on these four types of ground. Number one, wayside. And then stony ground. And then fell among thorns. Yeah. And then on the root ground. Four different types. First, what are these grounds? Now, as we know that the seed, we talk about the Word of God. The Word of God is the seed. And that Word, that seed, fell on four different types of ground. Now, all right, let's see further. The first one, wayside. What happened? The birds came and devoured them. Now, isn't that amazing? You know, we just read the whole part of the Scripture. Yeah, we just read that together. Question, can we remember this? It was less than five minutes ago. Now it shows that when we read the Word, it will not just like that recorded in our mind. Sometimes we just read and read the Word. But it was, like, it was just like that. Okay, well, I heard that. But none of them actually stays here. Do you know what I mean? It's not that easy. To remember. All right. First, wayside. What happened? Birds came and devoured it. Now, second type of ground, stony ground. We just read this. No depth and no root. So as a result, it went away. The third, among thorns. What happened? Choked by thorns. And this is the fourth one. Good ground. Produced 60, uh, 30, 60, even 100 fold. Now, like I said, that this parable is very, very important. Now, some theologians, many theologians actually, they said that this is parable, this is the parable of parables. That's why it's the title of today's message. It's parable of parables. Why? Because of Mark 4, verse 13. This is Jesus saying. And he said, Jesus said to them, Don't you know? Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand all? other parables. That means what? That means if you don't understand this one, it's impossible for you to understand the rest of those parables. That's why it's called, this is the parable of parables. The most important things. Now, like I said, that Jesus shared seven kingdom parables in one day. Every single one of them is about the kingdom of God. But this one is very, very important. That's why Jesus said, don't you understand this one? Now, that's why we're going to learn today. Like I said, that this is very simple yet very important because this is going to deal with how we can grow in the likeness of Christ. Now remember that? How can we grow in the likeness of Christ? All right, let's dig deeper. This is the first one. Wait, hang on. What happened with my clicker? All right, multimedia, can you help me to go to the next? Keep going. That's it. First type of ground, wayside, yes. So it is written in Mark 4, verse 15. Right, so I have to stop right here and there just to make you understand. I have to make sure that you really, really know and not only know, but you understand exactly what it says. All right, and these are the ones by the wayside. Now watch this, where the word is sown, when they hear. So they heard the word. And then what happened? Satan comes immediately. Now, what's this one in highlight? Immediately. Satan comes immediately to do what? To take away that word that was sown in their heart. Is it immediately? 
That means what? That means the enemy, the Satan, he will not wait, not even one second. Let me give you an illustration. Now, do you still remember uh, something that you've heard? The Word of God sown in your heart last week. How many of you still remember that? Let me see your hands. Last week, how many of you still remember that? <laughs> oh, come on. None of you. Last two weeks, how many of you still remember that? You're kidding. Are you? Aren't you? That means what? That means it's been stolen. Come on, guys. Look, immediately, the enemy will not wait, not even one second. So once it is sown into your heart, he will come immediately to steal that. Now, do you remember John 10, 10? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. Now, he has to steal something before he can kill. And then after that, he will destroy But first, he has to steal something. No, the most important things or the most valuable things actually is the Word of God. So when you listen to the Word of God, when you hear the Word of God, this is going to happen. Immediately, not slowly, but immediately, the enemy, the thief, will come to steal. Yeah? Now, this is very interesting. Now, Like I said that, oh, we can learn this story for also from Matthew's account, yeah? This is the, the one from the Mark's account. Now, let's read the one from Matthew's account. Matthew 13, 18 to 19. Yeah, similar story. Actually, Jesus shared about the, exactly the same thing. Now, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside, the first type of ground. That means what? That means, I always say this over and over again, understanding is crucial. Now, when we're walking in God as new believers, born again believers, understanding is crucial. It is always knowledge or information. Then, When we have the knowledge, as we keep going, we will get what we call understanding and then wisdom. Always like that. Remember, knowledge or information, understanding and wisdom. So this one is crucial, understanding. Because if we, if we hear the word of God and we don't understand, this is what's going to happen. The enemy will come and steal that word. Now, do you remember part of the scripture that says, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Remember that? Jesus saying, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I mean, the word of God is the truth that has the ability, has the power to set you free from any kind of bondages whatsoever, you name it. But it is only the truth that you know. The word will always be the truth. But if you don't know that one, it cannot set you free. As simple as that. Again, understanding is crucial. This is very important. Understanding. The first type of ground. Now remember, the ground is about our hearts. Human's heart. All right. Carry on. Second type of ground. What is that? The stony ground. Yeah, Mark 4, uh, 16 to 17. Okay, let's read this. Now, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Now, stop right there. Like I said, I will stop right here and there just to make sure that you understand. Look, another, another word, immediately receive it. Now, that kind of person, yeah, that kind of person, he do, does not reject the word. Receive. Look, receive. Isn't that good? Immediately, not slowly. Immediately receive. Even receive with joy, with gladness. But what happened? 17. What happened? They have no root in themselves. No. Look up here. The first fell on with second stony ground. 
No, the first one. The first one, what's in its own, and then, boom, gone. Stolen. Yeah? Receive with gladness. Yeah, look at this. But, have no root. No root. So what is root? Now, if you like plant, if you like plantation, many of you, many of you do, you know the importance of a root. Root is a support system. But you can't see the root. Any kind of plants, root will always root is something that will grow downward, not upward. It will go under the ground. So you can't see. It's unseen. But that is the support system. Without the root system, that tree will not grow. Or at least cannot grow strongly. But this is something very important. Yet you don't see this. You don't understand the root system. Because it's hidden under the ground. But this is very important. Yeah. Another illustration. Okay, there is a there is a conference, conference, very very uh, famous one, conference, yearly annual conference. Now I believe that you know it already. This, and I'm talking about church conference, yeah. And many people will go to that conference, very famous one. Yeah, especially young people, they love to go to that particular conference. And then in that conference, three, four, five days, yeah, everyone was on fire. Everyone was on fire. Young people, on fire. But the question is, after the conference is over, is the fire still there? Maybe you go to a, a, a crusade, I don't know, held by a very famous uh, man of God, say some, someone. And then you feel like the touch of the Holy Spirit. You were overwhelmed. You were on fire. Coming out of that Crusade, coming out of that conference, you feel, oh, okay, now I, I feel that I, I'm on fire. I know the Lord. The question is, how long the fire? How long can it be? One week after the conference, one week after the crusade, is the fire still burning? Second week, third week. Now, most likely, this is what happened. The first, second week after the conference, everything goes down. Go back to quote-unquote normal state question is why. During the conference, they can be like fired up, touched by the Holy Spirit, even slain in the Spirit. But after one, two weeks, everything goes back down. What happened? Here's why. Because whatever they heard in that conference, no matter how great it was, still, that things are not the revelation of that person who heard. It is the revelation of the preacher. It is the revelation of that person sharing the word of God. Oh, really? Yes. Now, so the question is how? What can we do to make those things, the word of God, become our own revelation? We have to repeat. Keep repeating the word over and over again. So it's like you are, you are planting one single seed and then you have to water it. Water it daily. Nurture. Yeah? Take care of that seed and then it will grow. That's the thing. Yeah? Now look, have no root. Have no root. Something that we cannot see yet, it's extremely important. Yeah. All right, carry on. And so endure for only for a time. Certainly, it endures. Now, like I said, that this one is slightly better than type of ground because actually, actually, that seed really grows. It does grow, but only endure for a time. Only for a time. Afterward, now this tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. Immediately they stumble. I'm going to stop right here. Look, when, not if. Now. None of us actually likes, no one likes persecution. No one likes tribulation. But the, uh, the Bible says when the tribulation comes, not if. And I believe that you know it already. Like the difference between when and if. 
if it's like 50-50, but when, that means what? That means the crisis, the tribulation, the persecution will come. Surely, yes. The Bible says, even Jesus himself says in John 16, 33, probably you still remember. Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isn't that amazing? But, but. In this world, you will not if. Look, when the tribulation or persecution right? Now, the ability, the ability to keep standing, believing. Word, but no root system, when these things come we will stumble. Now, what is this? Stumble. Now, another translation says, they get offended. So, what is this? Now, how, how many of you uh, have heard somebody that actually, somebody that actually gets offended uh, with the Word of God? What is that? Stumble, offended. Can we get offended with the Word of God? Oh, yes, we can. Yeah. Now, of course, in Bahasa Indonesia, it's easier, a bit easier to understand. Yeah, get offended. You don't like what people what people are saying uh, to you, and then you get offended. Yeah. In Bahasa Indonesia, it's called tersinggung. Can it happen with the word of God? Look, immediately again, not slowly. Immediately they stumble. Stumble means offend. Can someone get God? Another illustration. If somebody somebody's praying in a situation and prayed and prayed and prayed, and then after they closed, uh, he closes the, his prayer with Amen, of course, for the manifestation of the things that he has prayed for, right? But after wait, after waited and waited and waited a day, two, a week, or two weeks, and that person see anything, the answer of that prayer that he has prayed for hasn't come yet. And then he started asking God, Lord, what happened, Lord? I thought, I thought you liked me. I thought you loved me, Lord. I thought you are God that will always bless me. And then keep waiting and keep asking God and keep questioning God. Stumble, get offended. But actually, the original root, the original word is even wider than that. Not only get offended, but stumble means simply if we lose our enthusiasm about this word. That is offended. Simply, we can simply just lose our enthusiasm about the word of God. I don't trust that kind of thing. Somebody is sharing the word of God to you. Sharing his testimony, amazing testimony we just heard from Marcel. That's amazing. I don't trust that. Lose our enthusiasm. It's very difficult for us when we hear something good and we used to be able to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, but no, no, I don't want, don't want to be that kind of person. That's not just, not, it's not me. Offended. Simply lose our enthusiasm. That is offended. This is the third ground, stony ground. All right, loud, keep going. Oh, sorry, that's the second. The third one, among thorns. All right, Mark 4, 18 to 19. All right, let's read this. Uh, verse 18. Now, these are... They are the ones who hear the word. All right. And, now this is amazing. The cares of this world... The deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things entering and choke the world become unfruitful. Third ground, if we see, actually, that seed really grows. But it's just unfruitful. That means that seed, that seed doesn't bear it grows, yes, but there's no fruit. So what is a fruit? Now, of course, we know what fruit is. 
Yeah, there's a tree, fruit, now we know. But now talking about this is our heart. So what is the fruit actually? Now it says that. So fruit, let me explain. Now fruit, now if you want to check whether your life is uh, fruitful or not, whether you bear fruits or not, this is the easiest way to check. So what is the fruit? If, now this is very important, if there is something in you, in your life, there is something coming out of you, coming out of your life that blesses other people. That is your fruit. That means at that state, you are bearing fruits. Because fruit, if you, you are bearing fruits, your fruit is something that will be enjoyed by other people, mostly, not by yourself, no. So that's the easiest way to check. If there is something coming out of your life that actually blesses many people, that means you are bearing fruits. That's easy, easy to understand. Now, let's go back to this one. Among thorns. So what is this? What is a thorn? Now, of course, literally we know what, thorns, what thorn is. But in this context, now these are the ones sown among thorns. Now, amazingly, thorns, thorns, so how come in that type of thorns, yeah, a thorn or thorns also are a product of seed, but different seed. Now remember, the seed, the seed is the word of God sown into your heart. But there's another type of seed which is not the word. What is that? This type of seed is the world. So, the seed, the word of God, and another type of seed, the world. The seed, the word of God, when it is sown in your heart, it will have ability to bring good fruits. But this one, another seed, another type of seed, the world, it will also have ability to produce, but something different. This one, the Word of God, once it is sown in your heart, if your heart is a good ground, it will produce, the Bible says, 30, 60, or 100 fold. Yeah? It will produce what we call as faith, because we know that faith comes by hearing. But this one, the seed from the world, when... Yeah, it is sown into your heart. It will also produce something, but something different. Mostly, this is what we call worry, fear, doubt, anxiety. Isn't that amazing? So in this type of ground, yeah, it says this kind of ground, it has thorns. That means something has been sown into that ground previously before the word is sown. Or at least at the same time. Let's say, this is another illustration that you, you come to the church on Sunday and you listen something good, hear the Word of God, yeah, that is actually powerful. You feel like, oh, okay, I'm built up now. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way to Saturday, yeah, you are connected to this world, yeah, so you meet someone or many people with negative mindset, and then you talk to them, yeah, you deal with them, actually. And those people, whatever that they say, remember, last two weeks, it also have ability to produce another seed. The question is, which one is more powerful? The Word of God that you hear on Sunday, at least 40 to 45 minutes, or the world from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, to Thursday, and Friday? Which one is more powerful? Now, you know that. Which one is bigger? Which one has more influence in our lives? You know that. Here's the thing. Now, if we only hear the Word of God 45 minutes in one week, and then we spend from Monday through Friday listening to the world, that's why the thorns will be stronger. Yeah. Now look at this. They are ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the cares, even the cares, not the worry, the cares. So what's wrong with this? Lord, I care about my future. I care, I care about my family. I care about my investment. I care about my career. The care of this world. 
Now, I'm not saying they care about those things are wrong. No, don't get me wrong. But the Bible says, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting out of your cares upon Jesus because He cares for you. It's in your Bible. Cares of this world. And what else? The deceitfulness of riches. Now, how many of you know that riches can be deceitful? Deceitfulness of riches. And, now this is amazing, the desires for other things. Other things. What is this, other things? The desires for other things. Now this is dangerous, why? Because no one else can see this. No one else can see the desire of your heart. Only you know and God knows. It's hidden, but it has a potential to become thorns. The desire for other things. What is this other things? Other things other than the Word of God. Other things other than the Word of God. I don't know. We know. Probably our career, probably our future, our investment. But when it takes more space, Compared to the Word of God, again, it has potential to produce what we call thorns. Now, and look at this word. Entering in and choke the Word. How come that the thorn, that thorns can choke the Word? That means what? That means the amount of these thorns are much, much bigger than the Word. That's why these thorns can choke the word. If you have the word more than the thorn, the word will choke the thorn. Isn't that simple? Yeah, I believe it is. So it's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah? All right. Keep going. Now, the fourth type of the fourth type of ground. Yeah. What is this? Good ground. Yeah. Mark 4, verse 20. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Good ground. Finally, what is this? Those who hear the word and accept it. Accept it. And bear fruit, some 30 fold, 60, and some 100. Now, let's take a look at this one from Matthew's account. Similar story about this type of ground. Good ground, Matthew 13, 23. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands. Yeah. Now remember, the first type of the ground that we just learned, wayside. Someone receives, someone receive, he hears the word, but doesn't understand that. And this one, good ground, hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Now, but there's one word, very interesting word, is this. Um, where is it? Yeah, this one. Accept. Accept. Accept the word. This is crucial. This is very important. Now, many times when we read the, the Bible or we listen to a, a specific a message, sermon, and then we feel like, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand. Or, Lord, I don't agree with that part of the scripture. Because it's not always easy. Oh, no. You know what I mean? When you read your Bible, and then it comes to a very, quote-unquote, difficult, difficult part of the scripture that you don't understand. It's very easy for us, okay, let's just skip this one. Because I don't understand this. Or, no, no, I don't like, I don't like this part of the word. Lord, maybe, maybe later I'll go, back to this. I'll go back to this part. But later, not now. Because it just doesn't match my condition. We don't agree. We reject without me knowing that. Accept. Accept. We have to accept the word. Then, and only then, it will produce. Yeah? Now, before I close, look. Like we just learned, of God, yeah, is the seed. The seed. Now, 
The seed, the seed, the word of God has power to produce. So the power, the life is in the seed. Yeah, so you got that. The life is in that seed. Doesn't matter one single seed, it has power to live. Yeah. Whenever that seed falls onto the good ground, it produces something which is called 60, 100. On the table, on the floor, no. It has to be on the ground. What is the ground? Your heart. Now, but on the other side, the ground. Now remember, the seed has power to live. The power of the power, the life is in the seed. But on the other side, that ground. Now, the power of life is not on the ground, but the ground has the ability to grow the seed. You know what I mean? The ability to grow the seed. Now. Out of these four types of ground, the seed is exactly the same thing, the Word of God, but the result is different. Why? Because it's the ground. Those grounds are different. So the power to grow, the power to grow the seed is on the ground. The power, the power of life is on the seed. Now, this is very interesting because we talk about the ground. The ground is our heart, human's heart. Now, this is what, uh, the thing that we need to remember. Okay, worship him, you may come back. Look, the ground. The ground has a, a certain characteristic. Whatever, now listen to this. Whatever you sow on your ground, on your heart, it will grow. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. doesn't matter if it's good or bad. If it's the seed of the world or if it's the seed of this world when it is sown into your heart it will grow it will grow because the ground has power to grow any kind of seeds now look how many how many tv channels that you have more than 100 to be honest yeah and it's in your control the remote in your hand. Now, do you know, do you realize that? Let's say 100 TV channels every single day. Now, every single one of the channels, every single one of them, every single one of them has potential to grow thorns. And every single one of them is after your soul. Once you switch it on, and there is something in your TV or your internet. There is something right in front of your eyes, yeah, coming through your eyes, coming through your ears, something that you shouldn't see, and you keep staring on your screen. That means at that very moment, you are sowing the seed of thorn in your heart. That's the truth. That's the truth. So please be careful. Please, please, be careful. Okay, last one. Okay, could you please help me to uh, go to the next. Uh, yeah, all right, this one. Yeah, verse 26. Now, and he said, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Now, we, we just, uh, we just uh, studied this. And should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. So we don't know even how it works. Doesn't matter. As long as you sow that seed, it will grow. And that's it. You don't even have to understand, okay, how, how? Don't worry about it. It will grow. Yeah, all right. And um, he himself does not know how. 28, for the earth yields crops by itself. Now, watch this. The one in highlight. First, first, the blade. Then, the head. After that, the full grain in the head. What can we learn about this? First, the blade, then the head, and the full grain. That means what? It's telling us, when you walk with God, God will not bring you straight away from level 1 to level 10. No, it doesn't work that way. From level 1 to 10, no. It has to be the blade. After the blade, then the hair, and then full grain. That means what? Process that we have to go through. Process. Every single one of us 
if we want to grow, if we want to bear fruit, we have to go through this blade first, the head, and then the full grain. That is the process. We cannot skip this. Lord, I don't like the blade. I don't like the head. I just want to go straight to the full grain. Now, now if you see someone, great man of God, they are ministering all over the world. So what you've seen is full grain. But we don't know what's behind the full grain that he had go through the blade and the head before he can enter this state, full grain. Doesn't matter who we are, whatever we do, if we are Christian, born again Christian, we have to go through the process. The blade, the head, and the full grain. Then and only then we can bear fruit. All right, let's pray.